Hey guys, Kildare here, and I'm sure we're all aware of the next expansion for WoW, which has just been announced, simply titled Legion. So I watched the hour and a half presentation they showed off, and I thought I'd do a quick recap and point out some theories and speculation, and things that may have either hidden in it or hinted, or just some crazy theories here and there, and I'll do it from start to finish from the presentation, so we'll see how we go. So first up, we have the teaser cinematic. Now, with the cinematic, which I hope we've all seen, um, it's not the expansion cinematic. It was only what, a minute long, and uh, it's not tied to it, and it's not a, uh, a hint of it. So just keep that in mind. It's just a little connecting cinematic from WAD into Legion. So this cinematic most likely happens immediately after uh, the defeat of Archimonde when Gul'dan gets sucked into the, into the portal, and we don't know where he went. So, there are two possibilities, I think, of where he went to, which is the Tomb of Sargeras, which is looking unlikely at this current stage, but I think that could be it, and the Vault of the Wardens, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. The important thing, though, is what we see in this cinematic, which is Gul'dan revealing, who is clearly Illidan, encased in some kind of crystal... thing. I don't know. Anyway, it's Illidan, and he's, it's definitely Illidan. You can see his wings, his horns, his, his tattoos, the green, and stuff like that. Uh, if you're not too familiar with uh, some theories that have been out there for a while um, about why he could possibly still be alive, um, it's related back to demons, and I'll just do a quick s summary of it. It's a theory. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but it looks like Blizzard's going to go that way anyway, which is that demons very powerful demons, that is, when they die, they don't actually die on on the mortal plane, I think it was said, someone said it in the lore. Uh, they can't die on the mortal plane, if you do kill them, they will go to the Twisting Nether, and then they will come back. So, Dreadlords are known for this, so you can't kill a Dreadlord, which is, um, which is pretty simply explained. And uh, it's been known to happen to other powerful demons as well. And Illidan is a demon after all. He was a night elf, but he is in permanent metamorphosis, and so now he's a demon. So, moving on, we know that Illidan will be a part of this, which is pretty good. So, after that, they show some new continents. Um, sorry, not new continents, new continent, which is the Broken Isle. And we get to see a map of it. And it's quite different from the Warcraft 3 map, because if you played Warcraft 3, then you know you would have seen a map of the Broken Nile uh, back then. And it's quite changed quite significantly, but that doesn't faze me. I'm okay with that. They're free to do that. Um, so where is it on Azeroth is the next question. So if it stayed somewhat true to the map from Warcraft 3, then it would be located just above the uh, Maelstrom towards the Eastern Kingdoms. Um... Somewhere along there, it could be. Alternatively, they could put it somewhere else, because I think the Tomb of Sargeras was known to be somewhere else, more closer to Kalimdor, but who knows. Anyway, what we do know is that the hub city for this new continent, which is the Broken Isles, is Dalaran. So Dalaran will mosey on over there from uh, Northrend. I hope they changed it up a little bit. I hope it's not the exact same copy-paste Dalaran. Maybe they made it a little better, made it a little different, something like that. I know Jaina isn't a part of it anymore. She's doing her own thing. She'll probably make an appearance here or there in the expansion. She's gone a little bit crazy, but... Oh, well, I like it. And also, while this was going on, on the background you could see uh, Varian Rin with a CGI effect. Uh, well, CGI Varian Rin, I should say. And um, I thought initially this could be the new Warcraft movie, little teaser thing, but no, it's actually um, just a screenshot of the cinematic that will go with the expansion. So just a little tease of that. As for the Broken Isles, it is a night elf civilization that was at its best just before the Sundering 10,000 years ago. And also located there is the Tomb of Sagaris that I mentioned earlier. So the Tomb of Sagaris is actually on this island. Which is pretty big news for lore fanatics, so now we finally know where it is. And it's gonna it's gonna play a very key element to this. So move on to the story. So the, the story that they told us at the presentation was that Gul'dan is using the Tomb of Sargeras as a demonic gateway. So he opens it up and starts unleashing demons into Azeroth, and this will be the biggest invasion of Azeroth to date from the Burning Legion. So I'm not sure how that will work out. I'm hoping it will be a pre-launch event, because they did say we will deal with the invasion at the start of the expansion and not the end. So, 
I'm assuming that the pre-launch event would be demons would just be everywhere, just falling out of the sky, I don't know, just infernals and all this kind of stuff. We gotta deal with it, we get this little pre-launch thing that we get to deal with, like with every expansion. My most memorable one is Wrath of the Lich King, where the, the undead were everywhere, and the, uh, the crypts and shit like that. And, uh, so yeah, after we deal with all that kind of stuff, we then need something called the Pillars of Creation. And the Pillars of Creation were the things that created or shaped Azeroth into what it is, and it was of course made by the Titans. There was believed to be one pillar per Titan, per zone. Uh, they could be in raids as well, which was mentioned. And essentially, our the whole storyline behind this is that we are going to get all the Pillars of Creation and use it to either close the gateway to, for um, the Tomb of Sagaris, or to destroy it. Uh, I'm not sure if you can destroy it, but that could be the idea. I'm not sure if the Titans will actually be helping us or if we're just using their, their relics. Who knows, we'll see a little bit closer to the date. Next up is the zones. So the first zone mentioned is uh, Val Shara. I think I'm saying that right. These are a bit some, some weird names are gonna come in here. So Val Shara, which is the birthplace of Druidism. So this is gonna be the location where Malfurion came up, well, I wouldn't say came up, he was taught Druidism. And this will be one of our first zones, apparently. And the main enemy of this zone will be Xavius. He's going to be the big bad guy. And he, if you know, heard that name before, it's because he is the leader satire of, um, well, satires, and he is the one who created the Emerald Nightmare. So that's pretty big news for any lore fanatics out there. So, if I've read the book Stormrage, so I know all about him and all that kind of stuff. We'll also see other characters too, like Scenarius, the Demigod, and Ysara, so they'll be helping us out there. The other zone they mentioned is Stormheim, which is the homeland of the Valkyrie. I think I'm saying that right, Valkyrie. And uh, we'll, we'll get to know their backstory. They're a bit different than, from the ones in Northrend, so we'll just learn their backstory, see where they came from, what their purpose is, etc, etc. All that kind of stuff. Apparently there's a huge war raging between one Valkyrie tribe and the other one, and they also have some sort of uh, high, high rank or some kind of godly status known as God Kings, or there could just be one, could be God King. Who knows, like I said, this is really early, so not going to be telling us that much. Next up is Azuna, which is a Night Elf or High Elf city. I think it's located near the middle of it, of the continent. And this is just a city, um, very, very nice architecture, very elven sort of thing going here. It's going to be enemies, of course, so uh, enemies are going to be like night elf ghosts, apparently, and they also mentioned a dying breed of blue dragon, which I'm very keen for. We could get this new sort of evolved sort of blue dragon, which has been cut off from the, the blue dragon flight, and they will be enemies as well. And also, in the zone, we will see Queen Ajara. And she will have the pillar of creation that we need, so we're going to have to kill her, of course. And this is not a great thing for lore fanatics, because we've all been asking for it as well. Where is Ashura? What's she doing? And all that kind of stuff. Clearly, she's a big supporter of the Legion, so of course she's going to be the enemy. And I'm also very curious to the Naga, because she is the queen of the Naga now. So we should be seeing them, but there was zero mention of Naga in this. So, who knows, and also, um, the unused Murloc, um, skins that we saw in Cataclysm, some new, some of them were used, some of them weren't, of these new, like, terrifying Murlocs, not like they weren't terrifying already. But anyway, we move on now on to High Mountain, which is home to a native tribe of Torin, and this is also the place for, um, Natharian's chamber. It was the chamber of the Earth Warden Natharian, or, or most people know him as Deathwing. And here we will be seeing a bit of a quest line for, you know, the native Tauren and their kind of story, but what I'm interested in is there's going to be a quest line for Natharian's backstory and how that all went. So we could be seeing some flashbacks and that kind of stuff. And because we're seeing flashbacks of Natharian, aka Deathwing, then we could be seeing some old god kind of stuff. So They'll still have um, a presence in this, so I'm glad they haven't been forgotten, because I like the whole story behind the old gods. Alright then. And we also have the Nesingwari questline, so Hel Hemet, Helmet Nesingwari will be setting up camp here. And uh, we'll be, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there for him, I'm sort of meh, but I'm, I'll be happy to see him. So, doing the whole hunt thing, this is going to be a place where there are going to be like hardened beasts and stuff like that, it's the highest point on the continent. 
So there's going to be all kinds of different beasts and stuff like that. So you're going to be doing the quest line to hunt them down and get advanced a little further in his storyline as well. The last zone mentioned is uh, Shamara. I think I said that right. And uh, it's going to introduce a new race of elves. And I think this new race is probably one that we're already well acquainted with. Well, not well acquainted with, but that one that we've heard of, which is the Highborn. And the Highborn follow Queen Ashara. And they will be siding with the Burning Legion, as stated in the presentation. So they will be our enemies, this this new race. Uh, fall into, you know, Burning Legion corruption. And so they will be an enemy. They didn't say much about the zone from there. They didn't say anything about the Pillar Creation or the end boss there or anything like that. So that was a bit odd. They also didn't mention two zones. There's one unnamed zone just underneath uh, Dalaran or to the right of it. And another one called uh, Thral Dranath which was completely unmentioned, um, but I have no idea what's going to happen there, but it sounds very um, high elf, so probably high elf orientated. They also answered a very, very common question that was given to them ever since they started BlizzCon, which is, where is Irelia and Terelion? And if you're not familiar with them, just to summarize, there are two heroes that are lost, and there's two statues of them in Stormwind um, in, the, in the Valley of Heroes. And it's a bit, great big mystery. It's going back to Warcraft 2 lore. They're very, very well known with lore fanatics. But they just gave a very quick and simple answer be, saying that they will be in the expansion. And that's all they pretty much said. So they're going to come back. And I don't know how. Uh, hopefully as allies. I sure hope so. And hopefully not dead either. Because we wouldn't want that. We want that to close the book. But uh, it's good to see them back. I'm very, very happy about that. And then they moved the presentation forward to artifacts. So they talked about artifacts, and there's going to be about 36 artifacts, I think, different artifacts per class, per specialization. There will be a starter quest line to get the artifact uh, going, so some, quarter, some sort of very important events will happen that you'll have to take place in, and you will then go on to acquiring the artifact. Prot Warriors, they mentioned, will get scales of Natharian, so it'll be a shield and a sword made out of Natharian scales. Frost Death Knights will get twin blades of uh, Frostmorn, so they'll go back to Ice Crown Citadel, get the shards of Frostmorn, wield it into a weapon, and of course, the most well known one is going to be Paladins getting the Ashbringer. I don't know what Prot Paladins will get, I'm actually very curious to what pa Prot Paladins will get. But the big craze is over Ashbringer, and it, it looks pretty interesting, um, very interesting. It gets sort of like semi-legendaries, apart from the Ashbringer, which is a legendary on its own. So that's kind of interesting, it looks very exciting, very new sort of uh, concept. They also talked about artifact power, so what happens is you'll be needing to gather artifact power through doing quests, dungeons, PvP, raids, pretty much anything that you can do, anything major in terms of WoW and uh, you build up this artifact power and you spend artifact power on a talent point system that's inbuilt into the weapon and uh, this is something I like a lot very very much so it's the old school talent system before before wrath or sort of mid wrath after that after that so you know a classic through up to onto the wrath and I really like that talent system I really wish they didn't change it and um, I'm glad they're bringing it back and they're bringing it back for the weapon the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is that the I saw the uh, Ashbringer talent tree and it looked very very simple, very linear, which I'm not a big fan of. But if you look on the Frostmorn Twin Blades uh, talent tree, it looks like it has a lot more variety. So I don't know how they're going to balance that out. It just seems a little bit unfair at the current time. I just hope that you can't eventually spec into everything, so you can't get every single talent on the sword or the blade. Um, because then it becomes progression instead of customization, which we really don't want. That's just a, it's sort of like a meaningless task. It becomes that instead of choice. So I really hope they avoid that. After that, they move on to visual customization. So you can change the color and the general appearance of your swords. So they're going to be using mostly Ashbringer for the example. You can have a flaming one, a lightning one, uh, an upgraded version and they can all be different colors and stuff like that. And you can earn these different colors and these different uh, appearances through raids, quests, PvP, and achievements. That'll be your main source of doing it. Now one thing which has me very, very concerned is Transmog. They did not address Transmog at all. 
And this concerns me because while it's cool for everyone to be running around with the Ashbringer, it's not gonna feel as cool, like I said, when everyone has the Ashbringer. If you only have it, that's great, that's fine, you have your own custom weapon and it's epic and it's legendary and that kind of thing. But if every single paladin and his dog has the Ashbringer, it's not gonna feel cool, you're gonna feel like another brick in the wall. And uh, that's what I'm getting at. It's It just won't be that great in the end. I mean, sure, you can customize it a little bit, but everyone has access to this kind of thing, and it's limiting your access from the Ashbringer, which is now your only access point, to the whole repertoire of two-handed weapons across the entire game. So I really hope they make these artifact weapons transmogable. That is a big, big thing for me, because I have my weapons that I like and that I've been using since Wrath of Lich King. I love them. And I want to keep using them from the start of WoW all the way up until the end. And that's just, I've just associated myself with certain weapons and that's just how it is. But apart from that, they did uh, show another legendary which went, disappeared into nothing, which was uh, Fellow Morone or F Fellow Mulrin or something like that. It's Kalthus' Spellblade to, um, to summarize. So once Kalthus died, uh, we noticed that no legendary dropped off him, which was his supposed Spellblade, which yeah, that's a story behind it, stuff like that, and everyone was like, where the hell did it go? So now we know, and Fire Mages will be getting that weapon. So it's a one-handed, uh, it's either a sword or a dagger, it's very nice looking as well. But that just covers another legendary, which has gone sort of um, unseen. One of the other ones they showed was something called an Eagle Spear, which is very interesting. So the questline sort of starts in High Mountain with the Tauren. The strangest thing is that it's for survival hunters. Which makes me think survival hunters will be getting a revamp because it's a polar arm, clearly. And, you know, hunters can only hold one weapon at a time. So now this thing will be their weapon, and it's called an Eagle Spear, so I'm assuming it's meant to be thrown, so it's going to be a throwing weapon, but also I'm assuming it'll just respawn on your back or in your hand and you'll throw it again, or you can use it as a melee weapon. And I like the idea that survival hunters can be both melee and range, not great at either one, but they can do both. Just like how they used to do, like back in Wrath of Lich King and prior in uh, Burning Crusade and Classic, you know, Hunters got Wing Clip and Raptor Strike and all that kind of stuff in case, in case they came into melee combat. And so this could be bringing that back. So they could have a pet, a spear that they throw, and then when they get into close combat, they can start using that spear with some melee attacks, some melee orientated attacks and stuff like that. This is just a theory though, um, but it makes perfect sense to me because why else would a, why else would a hunter be given a polar arm or quote unquote a thrown weapon so that's just what i think next up as well they had feral druids so feral druids will be getting fang of the first night saber and this weapon won't have any customization which may be a bit of a letdown at the start but then you realize that it allows you to change the appearance of your form so cat forms will now be different which i think is really really cool uh, i think that's a really good idea because Having a druid with a customizable weapon, which they'll never see because they're swapping forms, is a bad idea. So, customize the form instead of the weapon, which is really good. So, they thought ahead with that one, which is good. Uh, the one that interests me the most is Spectral Form. It looks badass, in my opinion. It's really cool. And I really look forward to seeing what they can show us with the bear form as well. And they could even do extend it to uh, tree form as well if they make it mandatory. So, tree form could get some revamps, which I think would be really cool. All right. Next up, they had they mentioned class orders. So class orders is this thing where you basically lead your class. So you're the trainer now, not the trainee. So you're training everyone else, sort of thing. They wanted to clarify and make sure that everyone knows it's not garrisons. These are not going to be garrisons, which I'm happy about because garrisons just weren't that great. They were okay, you know, and they it was a good idea on paper and it worked out for a little while, but it just didn't work out in the end. So it's sort of a class hub in a class relevant location. So you're going to be in location relevant to your class is what I'm trying to say. So paladins will be underneath Light's Hope Chapel. So that's where they're going to be and that's where you're going to lead your, your class. I'm very curious to where priests will go because I really hope it's not just the church in Stormwind because that's pretty boring and pretty bland but there's no real churches anywhere else that we know of that aren't owned by the Scarlet Monastery so who knows? Who knows? And um, I also think this is where you'll go to upgrade your artifact and to change its appearance. Uh, just, just judging from screenshots that I've seen, it just looks like it. 
And I really hope that this encourages people to move away from capital cities. It will encourage world exploration, which is what I would like to see and is what Blizzard's trying to get. Uh, world exploration is very good. However, they could completely shatter this if you get a hearthstone to the said location or a portal. Just a portal just to take you there in every capital city. Um, I think that will really ruin it. It would be just a little bit too convenient for me, in my opinion, but who knows, it'll depend on what the masses say. So in your little um, class order, you'll get champions. So the champions will work like followers, but instead of an army, it's going to be just a few people. A few important people in Warcraft lore that will follow you and do what you say, essentially. So yes, you can put these uh, champions on missions, but these missions can't be completed by them alone, so it's not going to be like the whole um, daily reset sort of thing. These missions need to be done with you, so they will assist you in certain missions, or you will assist them in certain missions, and that's how it will work. Another thing which they mentioned, but didn't put any clarification on, was that you can maybe assign certain champions to zones, so when you do go to that zone, they will uh, help you in some way, shape, or form. They didn't specify it, like I said, but they just sort of mentioned that maybe these people can be assigned to locations. So that's going to be pretty good. So depending on your class will depend on your champions, what champions you'll get. So mages will be getting stuff like adepts and, um, and other mages, and uh, like notorious mages as well. And warlocks, are what I hope, will get, well, other warlocks and demons, so they can maybe uh, be in charge of uh, a pit lord, maybe. A pit lord might help them out or something like that. Some kind of significant um, demon, or even a dreadlord, a rogue dreadlord, um, that might help out. Something like that. And shamans would get stuff like elements and other shamans, so, you know, they could call upon elements to help them out and help out elements doing their missions and stuff like that. So the thing that we really don't want is if this becomes a reskin of garrisons. That's what we want to avoid, because garrisons were too much like a mobile game. You go there, you assign your followers to do stuff, you pick up your loot, and then you go away for 24 hours and come back and do the same thing. It's not really a game. It's not a PC game. That's a mobile game, and we don't want that again. And another thing that this thing might help out with is class identity. So all classes will have their own identity now. Uh, which is good because we kind of we didn't really feel it when we're all in the hub world and we see a hundred other warlocks and a hundred other mages and stuff like that we don't really feel like a class you feel like I said before another brick in the wall and I think they're trying to pull away from that and they're trying to make everyone feel unique and special in that sort of shape and form they did uh, do something a little ages ago um, I'm not sure if anyone will remember back but they wanted to add things class specific things which I think they'll bring out in this expansion which is, if you remember a while back, they showed some screenshots of paladins carrying a tome on them. And sort of like what they did in Warcraft 3 and in the cinematics, they have that tome. These little aesthetic things that they can bring along. And I think they're going to introduce that into this expansion, but they haven't made any mention of it as of late. So next up we have dungeons and raids. So they admitted that they haven't been utilizing dungeons like they used to. Dungeons just aren't what they used to be, and they've let that happen. And they admit that they fucked up, essentially. Which is good, because now they won't keep making a mistake, which is what we want. So, they want dungeons to be useful throughout the entire expansion. So, you're not just going to play at the start of the expansion, get the gear you need, and move on to raids, and that kind of stuff, and become a forgotten relic. And that's what they're trying to avoid, because I do like dungeons. Uh, the dungeons are very key and very important to MMORPGs. And if they, if they aren't done well, then your game will lose subscribers, of course. So the new dungeons look good. Uh, Black Rook Hold, uh, it looks very nice. It's got a nice sort of gothic nearly theme to it. Very like old abandoned manor sort of thing. It looks really, really nice. And the Vault of the Wardens looks really cool as well. So it's based on the Wardens that, you know, look after the Legion and ch uh, it's a prison essentially. And Maiev is supposedly the leader of the Wardens, so we'll probably be seeing her as well. So my major, major problem here with the dungeon aspect is that there are, t they, with everything that they showed, they showed a total of nine dungeons. I really hope they expand on this. This isn't really good. If we look back, Wad had eight dungeons, and it wasn't really a great experience. It was pretty unique, but it wasn't great. 
Mists of Pandaria had nine dungeons in total, and it was a slightly better experience than what Warlords of Draenor had to offer. It was a little bit more variety, a little bit more unique. Cataclysm had 14 dungeons, and it was a better experience than Mists of Pandaria. Initially, it was very long, very hard and drawn out, but then afterwards it got a little bit easier, and they, they evened it out. And then they brought along Wrath of the Lich King, which had 18 dungeons, and this was by far the best dungeon experience, in my personal opinion. It was by far the best. I hope they want to bring this sort of thing back. And the number of dungeons certainly matters, because people need variety and different things. And another reason why Wrath of the Lich King had it best was because it was innovative, and they had Justice and Valor. And those were very, very important currencies, because even if you were a fully geared raider, you'd still do dungeons just to get some justice and valor. If it wasn't for other gear or progression, it was for reputation, or it was for money making or crafting. And you needed these, these currencies, and you got them from dungeons, and everyone was doing them. Dungeons were at their best in Wrath of the Lich King, so I hope they can bring this back to that. Another reason why Wrath of Lich King and to a lesser extent Cataclysm excelled was because dungeons were released throughout the expansion, which everyone, I'm pretty sure everyone universally loves. Everyone just likes that. So they need to bring that back. So we, we all remember Forge of Souls and we all remember Zulaman. It was great, pretty much. So that's what we need. So next up we have raids. So they only showed two raids, but that's okay. It's they're slowly going to be released throughout the expansion, and they're going that's like what they did in Mop. Sorry, not Mop. Wrath. Uh, not Wrath. Holy crap! I'm going way off here. Warlords of Draenor. The first one they showed off was the Emerald Nightmare, and of course Xavius will be involved in this. So we're actually going to be going in and out of the Emerald Dream uh, slash Nightmare. Which is good, because that's what people want to see. People have been asking for the Emerald Dream and Emerald Nightmare um, for a long time, ever since they saw the uh, the dragons come out in um, in the classic uh, WoW and Vanilla. And so now we finally get it, which is really good. The other one is uh, Shumaru Shumara Palace, which looks really nice. It looks very elegant, and I really miss that, and I really like that. I'm glad they did that, because... I really don't like this primitive and primal warfare that Wad had going. I don't think many people liked it, to be honest. I mean, I get the whole orc architecture and the orc lifestyle and that kind of thing, but it was drilled into us too much, and I really, really didn't like it. And I didn't like it from the beginning, before Wad came out. And so now they're returning back to more of the roots of um, elven and human and that kind of thing, which, which is good, because I really like that. Last boss of this uh, raid will be Gul'dan, so he's not going to be the final boss of the expansion, which is very, very good. But on that note, we don't know who the final boss of the expansion is, and I really don't like this, because it start WoW has started to go downhill ever since they made the last boss vague. So Wrath of the Lich King, we know who it was. It was the Lich King. Burning Crusade, it was Illidan. And um, Cataclysm, it was Deathwing, and those were all prime moments in WoW, and then it started going downhill after we got this ambi ambiguity. Because we don't know who it is, and we don't know who we're after, and we just gotta wait until we're told who it is throughout the expansion, and I don't think people like that. I really don't. And I don't. I know I don't like it. I'm, well, also, the other question is, is Illidan good or evil? Because last time we saw him, we killed him. So... I don't think he's too fond on us, but at the same time, I don't think he wants to fight us because his greater enemy is the Burning Legion, so we don't know if he's going to be good or evil. But from what we can gather, he's going to be on the box art of the uh, of this expansion, so we're not entirely sure. We I really hope it's not Sargeras, uh, because if it was Sargeras, I think Blizzard would just come out and say it with the expansion title and with showing him off immediately. It would be something like Wrath of Sargeras or Revenge of Sargeras, and that'd be the title of the expansion. We would know it, and it wouldn't be subtle, because he's, he's a god, you know? He's a titan, sorry. There's a little bit of worry that this could be the last expansion, because it's called the Legion and, you know, Sargeras and stuff like that. But there's still some other, um, un... Un unanswered questions like the old gods. I think the old gods should definitely go somewhere because they are a threat to the Titans and to Sargeras. So they could be a bigger threat than all of them. They're just saying staying hidden. Who knows? We still don't know. This is all speculation. 
So moving on, we have Demon Hunters, which is what everyone has been screaming for. So Demon Hunters, they're finally here. We're finally going to be able to play them. So they're going to have chest tattoos and blindfolds. You can customize all of that. And they're not going to be wearing bulky armor. They're going to be showing off the tattoos and the, the blindfolds and their, their light and nimbleness, I guess you could say. So far, from the presentation, they have been Blood Elf and Night Elf only, which I'm very, very happy about because that's sticking to the lore. Those were the only people who could be uh, Demon Hunters. And something that would really ruin it for me is if I log in and I see a Dwarf or Tauren Demon Hunter just sitting there. That would make me cry, and it would take away the Demon Hunter feel and aspect immediately. And I just hope they don't make that mistake again. So they didn't mention what they're gonna, what their uh, armor type is. But I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's gonna be leather. But there is an unlikely chance it could be male because male is the least worn armor in the game. I think it, to this date, I think it's only worn by shamans and hunters, which makes it the least worn. So they might try to even it out with that. Who knows? Uh, the demon hunters will, however, be a hero class. So. It will be, uh, they will be starting at level 70, I think, because the story quest line will start in the Black Temple, which is a level 70 area. So basically, Ilden will send them to an important mission, and it's also suicidal, to a planet called Mardoom. And uh, some, somehow, some way, shape, or form, they'll get captured and end up in the vault of the Wardens. And then after that, the Wardens will need them because the Burning Legion's attacking them or something like that. They'll release them from themselves, from their cells and ask them to, to help them out. Okay, so a little bit more into the details of the Demon Hunter. They'll have two specs, Havoc, which is DPS, and Vengeance, which is Tank. Tanks are needed because uh, WoW is seriously lacking them. We have plenty of healers, we have plenty of DPS, so it's good that they can be tanks. They're not going to be three DPS, and it wouldn't make sense at all if they could be healers. So it's a good idea. They had some abilities, which I'm not going to read out or go through any of that. That just looks cool. It looks very, very similar to what Illidan can do in Heroes of the Storm. Their resource is Fury, which could be like energy, or it could be like rage, or it could be like both. Uh, we don't know. They show off a combat video as well, and um, they can double jump, which is not, not nothing majorly overpowered, but people seem to like it. Something they didn't mention at all, however, was the weapons. So they were using glaives throughout the entire uh, presentation, which uh, we don't have access to yet. So I think it's going to be a new weapon type, and I think they'll also be able to use one-handed daggers and maybe swords, just, just not to limit them too much. I think warriors and rogues might also be able to use glaives because they could use the war glaives after all that dropped off um, that dropped off Illidan. So I think those would be the prime ones. I mean, I know Death Knight can as well, and other and other ones as well. But I still don't think it'd be too appropriate to see glaives on them. There was also a no-show for Metamorphosis. We didn't see Metamorphosis being used. We saw some screenshots of it, but not it being used, which leads us to wonder how will it be used. So, will it be a form that you can swip, switch in and out of, just like uh, Warlocks can? Or will it be a signature ability with a long cooldown, and could be similar to Illidan's ability in Hero of the Storm, where he dives into the ground, pops back out in his new form with extra attack speed, you know, damage, health, stuff like that. Who knows, we still don't know, but it looks awesome. Next up is the honor system, and this is the final one. So, uh, we're nearly done here, guys. So, it's like the P it's PvP talents, to, to summarize. So, you earn them as you raise your PvP level. So, you start at 1, then you get it up to a maximum of 50. So, it's a lot much like the old school talent system combined with the modern day talent system, in a sense. So, some of the talents you get, some are actives, some upgrade your abilities that you already have, and then some are passives, which is really good. I really like that. I like passives, and I like stuff like this. Just to make it not too complex, and make it sort of like what they had in the old days, and I think it's great. Once you're at level 50, though, in the, uh, in the honor system, you can do something called Prestige, which is taken straight out of Call of Duty. So once you're at level 50, you hit Prestige, and you go back to level 1, and now you can earn some cosmetics. And that's how it works. So you don't get any advantage. In fact, you get disadvantage, of course. And you have to go through it all over again. Which is good, because it gives people an incentive to keep PvPing. Because once you're fully geared in PvP, all you want to do is arena, and not battlegrounds or anything like that. And even some people just get sick of arena. They just sit there in their full PvP gear and do nothing. You know, maybe camp other people out in the real world. Or, sorry, in, on the continent. 
So some of the uh, some of the things you can earn are mounts and titles and transmog and stuff like that. So it's really good. And also in the trailer, we saw a brief image of what could be 1v1 arena, which will be really, really good. I'm sure everyone wants to see 1v1 arena. It's been asked for a lot. And I think it will be great. And it's going to be that one thing where you can go to where you can't blame your teammate. You know, if you lose, you lose. That's because you did the wrong move at the wrong time. And you got to learn from that. So that's... That's really good, and I look forward to that. The new honor system looks great, and I really hope they do the whole, what they're doing with the uh, PvP talent system. I hope they can apply that and pass it over onto the the talent, the spec specialization for classes, because it looks better. Uh, the old system was better, in my opinion, but I don't think Blizzard wants to admit they made that much of a mistake. But they're going to slowly revert to it as they have been through the weapon, through the artifact, through the PvP thing, and hopefully they apply it to specialization as well. And um, I also think that, uh, just a speculation from me, I think that they will revamp Demonology Warlocks. Because Demonology Warlocks right now are far too close to Demon Hunters. They're just too similar. They're still spellcasters, but they have the metamorphosis, and they have all the kind of demonic sort of thingy going on, and you know what I mean. So... I think they'll get revamped. I hope that they'll be revamped into something more demon pet orientated. So you will empower your pet through your moves and stuff like that. I have no idea where it could go, but I think it should change because, you know, two race, two classes with metamorphosis is just a bit stupid. But overall, this looks really good and really promising, and I like the look of it. There's been some speculation here and there that I've mentioned, you know, some new facts here and there. Well, I won't say facts, but some new things to shed some light on where this is going. This is all still really early development, though, so no one knows where this is going for sure. But anyway, this has been going on long enough. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. If anything I missed out, just put it in the comments, and I like to read it, and other people can see it, and, um... Yeah, it looks really, really good. Let me know what you think. So I'll see you next time.